that leads to what I found really appealing in your book was the inaction demons and what I used in the um, subject line to the email I sent you because, uh, you know, I had uncertainty about contacting you and, you know, would you reply and will you come on my podcast? So I, I think I wrote my, my inaction demons didn't let me stop me from contacting you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great way to look at our, our fears and uncertainty in regard to inaction. We could, we could see it as a demon. So do you want to touch on that? Sure. Um, I think that we have all kinds of ways, all kinds of strategies, some of which we've really uh, become very skillful at to keep us from doing the things that we need to do in our life. Right. And, uh, so when I talk in my book about the demons of, of inaction, um, that's a list of those strategies. And, and we can think of that also as just the resistance that we have to doing certain things. We gravitate towards doing things that um, are pleasurable. We gravitate towards doing things that are um, easy to do. Um, we gravitate towards doing things that... Um, uh, kind of have have some clarity involved, but when we're faced with a situation where um, what we need to do uh, stimulates feelings of discomfort or anxiety, or it's confusing, we're actually not sure how to do it. Like, how do I fix my microwave? You know, you, so there's a, a sense of of um, confusion or not knowing. Um, we tend to avoid those things, and uh, and what happens often when we avoid things that are important for us to do is that um, we develop a skill that we don't want to have, which is a skill or a habit of essentially going with our feelings, right? If I don't feel like working on my taxes, I won't do it, you know? If I don't feel like doing the dishes in the sink, I won't do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, we do the things we feel like doing, and we don't do the things we don't feel like doing. And, and for me, I think that that's the best definition of procrastination. Procrastination really um, is is an issue of how we're dealing with our our emotional or feeling state, um, and it's often that we're doing the things that only the things or primarily the things that make us feel good or we think will make us feel good, and we're avoiding the things that don't. Um, but empowerment really is about being able to do the things that we don't feel like doing because they need to be done in our lives, right? Um, and our lives often end up being better, more successful. We have less problems when we do things um, that need to be done when they need to be done. Um, and that means that, again, we have to learn how to coexist with feelings like anxiety. If you do taxes, I, I assume that in Australia you have some kind of tax reporting system. Yes, um, But if... if if, you, if people do that and they find that confusing and complicated and therefore they, they try to avoid it and wait till the last minute, um, and I, I speak of this from experience because I was like this for many years, um, then what you do is you just create more suffering for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about it, the least amount of suffering is to just do your tax really early, get it filed and be done with it, right? Um, otherwise, if you wait months and months until the last minute, you have all those months to worry about it and be anxious about it. So as we're facing things in, in our current situation, um, there's probably going to be a number of things that we're going to have to deal with. And we have to be able to coexist with those feelings while we take whatever steps are necessary in, in terms of those kinds of issues. Um, and if we do that, we'll manage our lives and we'll manage, in this case, um, our circumstances, coping with these circumstances, much more effectively than if we let our feelings paralyze us or if we're constantly looking for a way to transform them into feeling good, right? So there's an underlying assumption that, you know, feeling anxious, fearful, lonely, depressed is part of the human condition. There, there is no permanent escape from that. It's just part of the human condition. And rather than try to find some permanent cure for those kinds of feelings, um, we learn to basically live our lives in spite of those feelings. Um, and by doing that, we get a lot more, more done in our life. It's, it's not just that we're more productive, but we're also more responsible um, and in many cases more successful. Uh, and in many cases, we cause less trouble and suffering to other people 
who are counting on us to do those things, right? When we say we're going to do them. So it's a great path, I think, for taking care of, of what we need to do in our life um, by, again, learning how to accept our feelings. We're not talking about denying our feelings, but learning how to accept them and, and while we're accepting them, to, mo to move on. The, the metaphor that one of my students years ago developed was it's like taking a, going out for a drive in the car, and here you have this feeling of, let's say, fear. Um, so you just pack up your fear in, in your backpack or your little suitcase, and you take it with you for a ride, right? Um, and, it, and it sits in the back seat while you do the things you need to do, your errands and stuff while you're out. Um, but for many people, um, anxiety and fear becomes the driver, right? So um, yeah. we're, talk we're talking about we don't want our feeling state to be driving the car of our life. Um, we want to be able to take that car where it's important to take it. Um, but we also take those feelings with us because they're part of us. Um, so they come along for the ride, but they don't prevent us from doing what we need to do while we're out.